guys. Let's solve with some square roots. That's our goal for the day. Today's an easy lesson, at least in theory. Um, not as many. It's not like the other quadratics, because the other quadratics, you have to have like this special algorithm, whether it's factoring or later we'll do quadratic formula, completing the square. You have to have like this idea of what to do. Where solving with square roots is just like any solving with any equation. You just have to understand the basics of it. So let's get to it. You can use this to solve quadratics, but not all the time. So that's the, the one drawback to this situation, but it's a, not too bad of a day. All right, so to solve with square roots, you do need to know how to simplify radicals. And so if you've done this before, it shouldn't be too bad, but if you've forgotten, let me help, help you. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna break this down into a factor tree. And so what two numbers multiply together to get you 45? Well, that would be nine and five. And it doesn't matter how you break it down. You could have gone 15 and 3. And then 9 would break down into 3 and 3. I always like to cross out numbers when I break them down. So what numbers am I left with? 3, 3, and 5. Okay. This symbol that we have here is called a square root symbol. And what square roots are all about are what two numbers that are the same multiply together. Right. When we take the square root of 16, the answer is 4. Because 4 times 4 gets me 16. And it's simplified that way. Well, we can simplify radicals even if they're not uh, perfect squares. If you have a pair of numbers, it is going to go in front of the radical. And any number that does not have a pair is going to be left underneath. And so since the threes had a pair, I wrote it out in front. The five didn't. It goes back underneath. Let's do it again. So 72. Uh, 72 can be split up into 36 and 2. And there's lots of different ways. That was the first one that came to mind. 36 can be broken into 6 and 6. 6 could be broken into 3 and 2, and this 6 could be broken into 3 and 2. All right, we broke it down. Now we're going to look for pairs at the end. So what do I have a pair of? Well, I've got a pair of 3s. They don't need to be written next to each other. I also have a pair of 2s. I broke that down, broke it down, broke it down. And then I also have a 1, 2 left over. Okay, so when we write our radical, we have a 3 that we could pull out in front. We have a 2 that we could pull out in front because it was a pair, but that 2 didn't have anything left with it, so it's going to stay underneath the radical. And so I'm going to be left with 6 radical 2 in the end. Let's do radical 27. How does 27 break down? Well, 9 and 3. 9 could break down into 3 and 3. I'm looking for pairs. They don't have to be next to each other. So there's a pair of 3s, so it can be written in front of the radical. This guy doesn't have a pair, stays underneath. 52 can be broken into 2 and 26. And 26 can be broken down to 2 and 13. Looking for pairs. And it doesn't have a pair. It gets written back underneath. Great. One more. Square root of 144. Well, 144. You, hopefully you know what the square root of 144 is. If you didn't, I could break it down into 12 and 12. But if you know it breaks down into 12 and 12, then hopefully that will help you. If I broke down 12, it would be 4 and 3. If I broke down 4, it would be 2 and 2. 12 could break into 6 and 2. And 6 could break into 3 and 2. I'm looking for pairs. So what do I have a pair of? Got a pair of 2s. Got another pair of 2s. Got a pair of 3s. And so I have a 2. I have a 3. I have a 2. There's nothing left underneath that didn't have a pair. So all it is is 2 times 3 times 2, also known as 12, because the square root of 144 is 12. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. If you're somewhat familiar with square roots, you will know that we need plus or minus signs, but not for any of those. All right, and we'll get to that later on. Simplify square roots. So if you are simplifying square roots, you're going to multiply the, the whole numbers together. So we can take 5 times 3 and get 15. If they're radicals, we are going to multiply the numbers under the radical together. So in this case, we've got 6 times 2, so it'd be square root of 12. So I took the real numbers and, or the whole numbers and multiplied them together. I took the numbers under the radical and multiplied them together. So I got 15 square root of 12. Well, technically, I could still simplify that because let's see if I can break down square root of 12. Square root of 12 would break into 6 and 2, and 6 would break into 3 and 2. I have a pair of twos, so I could write that in front. And so what I'm going to end up with here is two 
times 15, because I got that 2 and that 15, and the 3 is going to be left underneath, leaving me with 30 radical 3 for my final answer. It's weird, but you can do it. Let's try one more. Square root of 32 over 25, super ugly. I can take the square root of 25. Really what this is, it is the square root of 32 divided by the square root of 25. I'm square rooting both things. I know what the bottom is going to be. The square root of 25 is 5, but I got to mess with the top, which is the square root of 32. So let's go ahead and break that down. 32 breaks down into 16 and 2. 16 could break into 8 and 2. 8 could break into 4 and 2. And 4 could break into 2 and 2. Looking for some pairs. I got a pair of 2s. I got a pair of 2s. I got another 2 left over. And so in front of my radical, I'm going to go 2 times 2. So 4 in front. This guy didn't have a pair. 2 left underneath. So just some different things with working with radicals. That's not it. That's not the only things you need to know with working with radicals. But that will get you started. All right, we are solving square roots. Remember, quadratics, when we have the x squared, means you're going to have two answers all of the time. All right, and the key to today is don't forget the positive and the negative. All right, I was going to say plus or minus, but it's not always plus or minus. All right, so just pay attention to that. We could say plus or minus. But it's not always plus or minus. Sometimes it is there's a positive and a negative version. And that's what that means. All right. So x squared equals 36. We are square rooting this. And this is strange, but this is different than this square root. When you already have a square root symbol taken, you are just simply square rooting it and it's going to stay positive. But if I'm solving this question, x squared equals 36, you are answering the question, what could x be? That when you plug in a number here, it's going to get you 36. Well, we know what the square root of 36 is. If you didn't know, you could break it down. 36 breaks down into 12 and 3. 12 breaks down into 4 and 3. 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. I have a pair of 2s. I have a pair of 3s, otherwise known as 6. So if I plugged in 6 here and took 6 squared, that would get me 36. So that would be a true statement. But what if I plugged in negative 6? and squared it. Or in other words, I took negative 6 times negative 6. That also gets me 36. So when I'm solving an equation, and when I square root it, I need to write plus or minus. When I'm solving an equation, when there's an equal sign, we're going to use plus or minus, and that's a key here. All right, so let's look at example 2. x squared equals 80. We're going to get rid of the square, so I'm going to square root it. All right, so I'm going to break down 80. 80 is going to break down into 8 and 10. 8 could break into 4 and 2. 4 could break down into 2 and 2. 10 could break down into 5 and 2. What do I got a pair of? Got a pair of 2s. Ah, I was trying to connect those and make it look cool, but instead it looked awful. I also have a pair of these 2s. So what's x going to be? I've got two 2s, so it's going to be 4 radical 5, but that is not the answer to this question. Because it was a squared problem, there's going to be two answers. Because I could take positive 4 radical 5, or I could take negative 4 radical 5. Both things work there. It's plus or minus 4 radical 5 for the answer. We haven't gotten to this yet, but we're going to. Let's go to the next one. Number 3. Okay, And again, the whole reason we were doing this is because the opposite of squaring something is square rooting. Just like the opposite of adding is subtracting. When it was just those, when it was x squared equals 36, it was pretty easy. We just take the square root. But this is a little more complex. There's a lot of stuff going on. Anytime you solve, and you, you heard me talk about this back in chapter or, yeah, chapter 1. When I'm solving, I'm doing order of operations in reverse. I'm going to try to add or subtract. Then I'm going to try to multiply or divide. Then I'm going to mess with exponents. And then finally, I'm going to do parentheses. But I'm doing each one step by step. And so in this problem, if I want to solve it, the first thing I'm going to do is add 5 to both sides. I'm going to try to add or subtract to get x by itself. So I did that. I'm left with 2x squared equals 28. So we added or subtracted. The next thing we're going to do is try to multiply or divide. Well, over here, it's 2 times x squared. So if I want to get rid of 2 times that, I'm going to do the opposite of it, which is divide by 2. 
28 divided by 2 is 14. Now that I've added or subtracted and I've multiplied and divided, now I can do the last thing, which is exponents. So if it's squared, the opposite of squaring something is square rooting. We're just doing the opposites here. X is going to be equal to the square root of 14. I could come over here and say, hey, 14 breaks down to 7 and 2. That's it. I don't have any pairs, and so I can't do anything. It's going to just stay plus or minus the square root of 14. That is my answer here. And just as a side note, notice that this is different than the last section. The last section we factored. The reason we had to factor in the last section is because there was a squared term and a linear term. It had x to the first power. We are able to use solving with square roots because there's only an x squared term and not an x to the first power term. Okay, same thing here. x squared term, not an x to the first power. So let's try to solve. We're doing order of operations in reverse. We can do square roots because it is just x squared and no x. We're going to work this way. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is add or subtract. Well, let's get rid of that 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Great. Now we're going to try to multiply or divide. Well, it's 3 times that. So to get rid of it, I'm going to divide by 3. Cool. I've got a square. Now I'm doing exponents. How do I get rid of a square? I square root. What number multiplied together 2 times is going to get me 9? Plus or minus 3. It's squared means two answers. I better have two answers. X is equal to plus or minus three. Those are the two places that make that statement true. Let's see the next one. Example five. A little bit different. PEMDAS in reverse. All right. I can't add or subtract here. Okay. I can't do this part right here because it's inside the parentheses. I wouldn't do that till the end. There's no multiplying or dividing. So the first thing I'm going to do here is an exponent. It's squared. So how am I going to get rid of a square? I'm going to square root it. So x plus 3, because the square and square root would cancel, x plus 3 is going to be equal to the square root of 49. And here's the mistake kids make. What is the square root of 49? Well, it is 7 and negative 7. I am writing them separate here, and as opposed to like this answer right here, or this answer right here, because I have more work to do, because x is not by itself yet, because I still need to get, get rid of this plus 3. How am I going to get rid of that plus 3? I'm going to subtract 3 from both answers. So x is going to be 4 and negative 10. Both of those answers are true here. All right. Think about that. If I plugged in 4 for x, well, that would be 4 plus 3, which is 7. 7 squared is 49. That's a true statement. Okay, or negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7, and negative 7 squared is 49, also a true statement. I need both, but the key here was writing the plus or minus as two separate numbers and then subtracting 3 from both. Let's look at example 6. To get rid of the square, I'm square rooting, square rooting. What's square root of 81? It is 9 and negative 9. I'm writing them separate because I'm not done yet. Because the last thing I got to do is add 6 to everything. X is going to be 15 and negative 3. Those are the two answers to this question. Those are the two numbers I could plug in and make this a true statement. Order of operations in reverse. All right, 7 and 8. We get a little crazy here. Let's see what we got. This is as bad as it could ever get. But if you can do this, you can do them all. So PEMDAS. I'm going to start by getting rid of this. Adding or subtracting. I'm going to start by getting rid of the plus 2. I'm going to subtract 2. Negative 46 minus 2. That's negative 48. Now I added or subtracted. Cool. That's done. Next thing I need to do is multiply or divide. Well, I got this negative 3. Don't distribute that thing in there. Okay. That's a mistake a lot of kids make. That is wrong because inside these parentheses, it's squared. You cannot distribute like that when something is squared. Instead, we're going to get rid of that negative 3 by dividing it. Divide it out. It's being multiplied. What's the opposite of multiplying? It's dividing. Negative 48 divided by negative 3. That is 16. Positive. So we multiplied or divided. Now we can jump into exponents. How do I get rid of the square? I square root. Square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. I almost wrote plus or minus 4, and that wouldn't be wrong. 
but I really need to do it this way. Because the answer, if you write plus or minus four, the thing you're going to do is you're going to subtract three from that and you're going to say the answer is plus or minus one. That is wrong. Don't do that. Okay, because if I plugged in negative one, I wouldn't get 16. Instead, I write it separate because I'm subtracting three from four, which is one, and then I'm subtracting three from negative four, which is negative seven. That's why we write it separate to make sure we get the correct answer in the end. Last one, no adding or subtracting. There's nothing added or subtracted. So the next thing I need to do is multiply or divide. Well, this one half is being multiplied. What is the opposite of multiplying something by half? It is multiplying by two. Multiplying it by two because multiplying that by two is going to cancel that out. 18 times two, two is 36. Yeah, that's right. It looked weird for a second. All right, cool. We got to that point. We multiplied or divided. Now we're going to deal with exponents. So to get rid of the square, I'm square rooting, square rooting. 2x minus 4. Square root of 36 is 6 and negative 6. Got to keep going here. All right, so now we're to parentheses. I'm inside the parentheses. I'm not done. I got to get rid of this negative 4 next. So now I'm just back to the start again. Now I'm back to adding and subtracting. Plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. 2x is equal to 10 and negative 2. Last thing, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. x is equal to 5 and negative 1. That's what we're looking for in the end there. Again, if I plugged in 5, I'd get 18. If I plugged in negative 1, I'd get 18. I get two answers every time. All right, I like this exit pass, so let's do it. Decide how you would solve each problem by writing either factoring or square root. So this is kind of tying the two things together. On this problem right here, I don't want to factor that. It is not a trinomial. It's not a, an a square, ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, that's not in a standard form. So instead, we can just use square roots. So we would use square roots. It's just like number, what is that? Just like that one, just like number five up there. Okay, we solved that one with square roots. Number two, it's got, a, it's got a squared term and it's got a linear term, x to the first power. Since it has a quadratic term and a linear term, we cannot use square roots. We are going to have to factor. And in order to factor, you've got to make it equal to zero, which it is, but we are going to factor that guy. You cannot use square roots. Number three, I've got a quadratic term, but I don't have a linear term, so I can use square roots here again. All you would have to do is add five and then square root it, and you'd be done. On number four, I've got a quadratic term, and I've got a linear term. So if I've got both a quadratic and a linear term, I have to factor. There's no other options. Answer the following questions. How many answers will each quadratic problem have? It is two. Quadratic means x squared. Two answers. When graphed, what shape does a quadratic make? A parabola. Does it seem like I've said that a lot? I've said it a lot because I think it's important. Okay, if you really want to understand quadratics, you got to understand that concept. Hope that helps. If not, ask questions.